My name's Claire Trippett and I'm, I'm a Chief Technologist at CPI and I'm part of the team that helps with bringing innovations in sustainable fashion to market. The advent of fast fashion really democratised fashion. It made it accessible for people so that people could look fashionable, stylish no matter what their budget was, but with that comes an enormous price to pay for the environment. The fashion industry is incredibly wasteful, polluting and energy intensive. It, it has a significant effect on climate change, so it's responsible for 10% of global carbon emissions, which is a huge amount. So this is, this is the equivalent of global aviation and maritime shipping combined. It's also the second largest user of the Earth's water and it's estimated that it's responsible for around 20% of global industrial wastewater pollution. People probably wouldn't guess that 85% of the textiles that are produced for clothing actually end up in landfill and it's estimated that a garbage truck of unwanted textiles end up in landfill every second. And this is a huge problem because a lot of the things that end up in landfill, they, they don't, they're not biodegradable, so they're gonna hang around in the landfill for a really long time. Um, and they're more likely to end up in landfill in the first place because um, if they're produced from kind of plastics, they may not be as durable and they, they might be thrown away more readily. These synthetic and plastic textiles have kind of a double punch impact on the environment. So as well as not readily biodegrading and kind of sitting in landfill for a long time, um, a lot of them are also manufactured from fossil fuels and the fashion industry is only just waking up to the impact that it's having on biodiversity. There's deforestation to produce raw materials such as cotton for, for textiles. There's also deforestation for animal agriculture, raising livestock to, to produce um, leather. Even though the fashion industry does have such a lot of negative impacts on the environment right now, technology and innovation can provide the solution to a more sustainable future for fashion. One alternative to getting materials from animals is to grow them in a lab. When we look at some of the animal-based materials, such as leather and silk, they're actually just made from protein building blocks. So we can take the DNA that is used to produce collagen for leather or silk proteins, and we can produce these proteins in the lab using bacteria that contain the, the DNA, which is the recipe for producing the protein that we can then use to create an alternative to raw materials. So if we can take these recipes from where they are naturally, be that in a cow's skin producing collagen or in a silkworm producing silk proteins, we can take these recipes and give them to our friends, the bacteria, who can manufacture these proteins for us. So this is making animal materials without any animals involved at all. I guess personally, I'm most excited about the kind of biological revolution that's happening. So this is using things like microorganisms to provide a sustainable option for dyeing clothes. There's microorganisms that can help with textile recycling, with kind of degrading um, and digesting unwearable or unwanted textiles and turning them into new yarns. There's an emerging field of science called cellular agriculture, so we're effectively growing up cells instead of animals. There are companies who are looking at growing leather, um, so taking a, a sample of cells from a cow and growing this up in a, in a bioreactor, um, and actually growing, growing leather from the cells of a cow. With these kind of novel and innovative technologies, one of the problems that the industry faces is scale up. It's how we can scale these technologies so that they are cost effective and can be manufactured at a commercial scale. That as well is what makes CPI a unique kind of innovation centre. It's a unique asset to help this industry because it's such a broad area, because we have this broad range of capabilities like bioprocessing, um, engineering, you know, printed and hybrid electronics, formulation as well. It's kind of formulating these, th these textiles, providing coatings to help them um, become more functional. It's all of those things, bringing them together. I don't think there would be many places that would have the range of capabilities and expertise that, that we have. The fashion industry is something I'm really interested in. And as it is for a lot of people, it's a really important industry. It helps, it affects people's self-confidence. It can make people feel better. It's a form of self-expression. And the fact that we can use science and technology to just provide a different route um, to producing these materials. I understood about 
genetic engineering and molecular biology, understood how you could take the, the DNA blueprint of a protein, produce that in a large amount and just replicate something that is produced from an animal in, in an ident almost identical form. The technology is still at an early stage and we, it still needs to be scaled and produced commercially, but it's there, it's at the start of kind of a materials revolution. So it's really exciting. My hope for the sustainable fashion of the future is that these innovative technologies that are going to help make fashion more sustainable can be accessible to everyone, that they're available globally um, and not, not just for the few. I would love to see somebody wearing something that comes from a bioreactor. That, that would be amazing.